Hi, I'm Nathan Hope, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Dialog Manager add-on for Godot 4. First up, I'll talk about a few of the changes in this version compared to the one for Godot 3. If you're just getting started, then you can skip to the next chapter. The main difference is that Dialog files are no longer .trez files, they have the .dialog extension. The add-on compiles the text files into resources in the background whenever they are saved with changes. This means you can now more easily edit them in external editors. The parameters for get next dialog line have also changed. The resource is now passed first with the title now being optional. If no title is given, then it will start from the first printable line of dialog in the resource. There are also a couple of settings that have been removed. Compile at runtime is gone because it is no longer needed and continue through titles is gone because now it's the standard. The concept of blocks isn't what it used to be, so keeping this setting didn't make sense to me anymore. If you want to end dialogue at any point, you can use the end jump. The way game states work has been simplified a little, but you don't need to change the way that you're currently using them. You can also jump to titles in other files now, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. And there are a bunch of other internal changes that you don't really need to worry about. To help prepare your dialog files, I've added a tools menu item to the Godot 3 version. If you click prepare for dialog manager 2, it will find all of your dialog resources and turn them into dialog files, making a couple of syntax changes along the way. It's not perfect, but it should do a good enough job to get you going. Once you've upgraded and moved to Godot 4, you can remove your old dialog.trez files. Okay, back to dialog manager 2. Make a new dialog file by clicking the new button and choosing where to save it. By default, you'll get some example text. You can click this test button to run the test scene. This test scene will run through the current file starting from the nearest title. This scene makes use of the provided example balloon, which I'll talk more about soon. First, I'll go over all the stuff you need to know in order to write your dialog. Let's start with an empty file. Dialog lines are in the form of character colon dialog like this. If you want to randomize the text a little bit, you can specify random variations within double square brackets separated by pipes, like this. You can also add BB code to dialog. There are a couple of special ones that control the speed of your dialog. If you use wait equals one in a line, then the label will stop typing and pause for one second. You can use any float there for the time to pause in seconds. If you use speed equals 5 or any float, it will multiply the typing speed by that amount. If you make the speed less than 1, it will type slower. Now let's give the player some response options. If you want to add responses, then you write them as lines beginning with a hyphen, like this. Then you can indent the following lines to signify further dialogue for when that response is chosen. Now, when we test it, we can choose a branch to go down. And that's about as basic as dialogue can get. Next up, I'll talk about conditional lines. Conditional lines begin with if, elif, or else, and then specify an expression that can be evaluated at runtime. But the dialog manager itself is stateless, so in order to evaluate expressions containing variables and functions, it must draw from the state of the game itself. It does this by polling any globals as well as anything available to the current scene. I have a global called state that has a property called hasMetNathan that starts as false. We can check it to conditionally say different dialog. We can also write lines to modify these properties as well as run methods on any available global. Those lines are called mutations. Mutation lines begin with either set or do, followed by an expression. Use set for when you are modifying a value and do for when you are running a method. Here we can update the hasMetNathan property to true once we've met. When method mutations are run, they are called with await, so you can use them for pauses in dialog lines or for running animations. 
The way I use them in my own game is almost like stage directions, telling characters where to walk and what actions to perform while delivering their lines. Another place we can make use of state properties is within dialogue lines. By using double curly braces we can insert variables that will get replaced with their current values when that line is run. You can also use variables in character names. The next thing I'll talk about are titles and jumps. Title lines begin with a tilde and are used for marking specific places in the dialogue. You can redirect the flow of dialogue to a title using jumps. A jump is in the form of equal, angle bracket and then a title. Like this. You'll notice the editor has autocomplete for known titles. Jumps can either be on a line by themselves or on a response line. When they are on a line of their own, they will jump to the title when reached. If they are part of a response, then they will jump once the player picks that response. Usually, jumps will jump to the title and continue from there until dialogue runs out. But, if you write your jump with an extra angle bracket, like this, then it will return to this spot once the dialogue runs out or it hits an end jump. If you want to force the end of a whole conversation regardless of it being in a jump slash return chain, then you can use end with an exclamation mark. You can also jump to titles in other files. To use titles from another file, you have to declare it at the top of the file first. The syntax for this is import file name as alias. If you drag a dialog file onto the editor, then it will import it for you. And now you can jump to titles in the snippets alias like this. This is handy if you have a generic dialog file containing reusable lines. Now you don't have to duplicate those lines across multiple files, you can just import them. And now that you have a bunch of dialog, you probably want to show it in your game. You can use the provided example balloon initially, but you'll most likely want to make it a new one to suit your actual game. Most of the heavy lifting is done by this dialogue label component that is provided by the add-on. It handles typing out and any pauses or speed changes that you have specified in your dialogue. In the examples folder, you'll find a few common balloon setups that you can look at to see how they have been put together. Examples include using character portraits, asking the player for their name, and a point and click adventure style conversation with voice acting in two languages. And that brings me to the last thing I'll talk about in this video, exporting translations. There is an option in this menu to export translations as a simple CSV. This generates a standard translation CSV file that contains all of the dialogue and response text. If the file exists, it will merge in any unknown translations. If you find yourself continually exporting changes to CSV, or if you are using voice acting to accompany your dialogue, then you might also want to use line IDs. These IDs are used by the translations to identify lines no matter if their actual text content changes. This also means that you can match the ID against voiceover files. The point and click example shows one way you might do this. There is also a setting you can enable to treat lines with missing IDs as errors so that you can make sure every line has an ID. And that's all you need to know to get going with the Dialog Manager add-on. Download a copy and give it a go. I'd love to hear about the games that people are building with it, so if you haven't already, then join my Discord. If you have any questions about the add-on, then post a comment below or ask in Discord. That's all for me for now, over and out.